So in today's video we will have a look at a special form of muscle edema in the foot. So this is the case we are dealing with today. But before we jump in, just a quick note what the rabbit was doing here earlier. Uh, and he had an eye patch. Uh, this is just to remind myself that I had an eye injury on the weekend. So a uh, little scratch in my eye. So that's why I was not showing myself here today. But you will see me probably back next week. If you are a Patreon, you can now get access to this case with the original DICOM files over on Collective Minds Radiology. You just um, have to let me know that you joined and I can add you to the Patreon group here. Now in case you are not a Patreon, this would be now a very good time to become one. Because Patrons not only get access to these cases in my videos, now and then but also get exclusive videos every month so if you want to join and support this channel and get some extra educational material then you can just become a patron for ten dollars a month here you can find the link in the description down below okay now patrons pause the video go over to collective minds and then come back after solving the case so this is the same case that I showed you earlier and it's a diabetes patient and we can see um, he's got an amputation already in the past and the reason why they did the MR scan was to rule out abscess and um, osteomyelitis and stuff uh, because he has persisting wound defects at the level of the heel and lateral midfoot. Now this is the MRI. And I'm just quickly running over the, the main findings, but what we actually want to focus on is the edema in the musculature. So uh, we can see the defect here in the skin. There is some subtle edema at the lateral process of the tuber calcani. And if we switch over to the T1, we can see that the fat marrow is preserved. So there is no indication that there is osteomyelitis happening there and also no abscess formation visible. And if you want to know more about how to make this distinction, there is a separate video on my channel and you'll find the link in the description down below or in your upper right corner right now. Now, going back to the lateral wound, we can see there is um, some stuff happening as well here. So we can see the amputation. I'll just make this big. So we can see the amputation here. We can see some superficial stuff happening here. And um, we can also see this here on this sequence so maybe there is kind of like a pouch or something with you know with communication to the surface i'm not really sure then there is some gadolinium enhanced imaging and we can see a subtle rim enhancement so maybe this is some kind of like a fistula, a fistula or beginning abscess formation down here to the bone but the bone itself there's not much of enhancement or edema and on the t1 we can again see that the fat marrow is preserved so there's no indication of a proper osteomyelitis here. But that's actually not the talking point of today's video but what I want to show you is this edema in the musculature here. So you can see it's quite intense, it's quite diffuse, it's affecting several you know different muscle groups. Um, you can also see this here on the coronals, it's all the intrinsic musculature uh, the, on the plantar aspect mostly not so much at the back here so as far as you can tell so it's mainly down here now this is now not something that you should be worried about with regards to infection first of all it's there's a lot of distance between the edema and these kind of defects in the skin so this is very unlikely to be some phlegmonous infection that's affecting all of the foot and the Actually, also another clue for this is uh, if we go back one year earlier, we can see this edema was present already and this was before the amputation. So you can see this was the severe infection, the reason why they actually, let me just zoom this one in. So this was the infection, so they had to resect the, the bone here. And you can see the edema and the musculature was present already at this point. And it was, it's now there for over a year and now the question is now what's happening here and this is something that you occasionally will see in diabetic patients this is a subacute to chronic denervation edema from the diabetic polyneuropathy and this is something that's described in a few review articles <laughs> for example here in this radiographics article from uh, from 2012 muscle denervation 
and let me just quickly show you the title so it's diabetic musculoskeletal complications and their imaging mimics but there is no fascial edema and there is no like abscess formation and stuff so this is basically the example they show here subacute and chronic muscle denervation in a diabetic woman you can see there is generally a little bit more fat infiltration than what we want to have and a lot of muscle edema now this is very intense sometimes it's subtler and sometimes if you don't know or if you just see this and you don't have the full history it can be an indication that the patient has diabetes and it seems to be present before the clinical symptoms of a proper polyneuropathy according to the article so and what i just want to say if you see some unexplained edema here then basically uh, think about diabetes now it typically is in the intrinsic musculature of the foot like in this case here so this is now a separate patient and as you can see this patient shows similar changes in the musculature with this patchy very irregular edema of all of the plantar muscles and intrinsic musculature and i think there was even something in the soleus back here and there was no trauma so um, this is a case that i discussed with one of my fellows um, that's participating in my virtual msk fellowship and when we were discussing this case we noticed his edema and we had a chat about or i was asked what's actually happening here and at that time i i haven't seen this for quite some time but i still remember vaguely that this could happen with diabetes mellitus so we were then going back into the you know the clinical history of the patient and the data and in fact it was true so the patient is or was actually a diabetes patient but they were not giving us this information or it was not properly known with the initial referral but the blood work and everything he had ele elevated glucose levels and um, stuff so basically just based from this image we were able to reconstruct basically that the patient was diabetic and uh, we didn't have to worry about any you know some strange differential diagnosis but we could actually say okay guys uh, this is subacute or subacute on chronic denervation in diabetic polyneuropathy or something like that all right okay okay just wanted to show you this that's basically all for this week. Go check out my new homepage, msk.acton.org. You'll find all the information you need um, with regards to my teaching on that homepage. If you want to know more about the virtual MSK fellowship, you can go and apply there today. And if you want to take part in our group sessions that I do on Saturday evenings, UK time, you can just click here and join me on Saturday 8 p.m. UK time and yeah you find all the other links to my book YouTube videos and masterclass and stuff like that so go check it out and with that that's it thanks for watching and see you next week